The Kraft Foods Company presents Willard Waterman as the Great Gildersleeve. The Great Gildersleeve is brought to you by the Kraft Foods Company. Kraft, makers of the one and only Miracle Whip salad dressing. And one and only is right, friends, because there is no other salad dressing like Miracle Whip. No other salad dressing has that distinctive flavor, that lively, teasing flavor that's peppy, yet not a bit too sharp. It's a flavor millions prefer. Enjoy it on your salads. Tomorrow, get a jar of the one and only Miracle Whip. To the great Gildersleeve's nephew, Leroy, it seems like a year, but it has only been a few days since Aunt Hattie wrote that she was sending Leroy a pony, a real live pony. You can imagine what this has done to the water commissioner's household. Hey, Uncle, has the mailman been here? Have you looked in the mailbox? Yeah, believe me, Leroy, there's no pony in the mailbox. I know, but you said we'd get a notice from the express company when it came. We will, my boy, but you'll have to be patient. Gosh, I've been patient all week. I'm the most patient little kid I ever saw. <laughs> Are you sure you looked in the mailbox, Unc? Sometimes letters get stuck in there. Maybe I better check. Lee, I don't stick your arm up the mail chute. Last time we had to call the fire department. <laughs> okay, Auntie. Yes, Marjorie? Auntie, where are we going to keep a pony? Well, Marjorie, it's... Yeah, that's a good question. We'll have to keep him in the garage, I guess, for the time being. Hey, Keen, Unc, in the garage? Well, we have a two-car garage and only one car. There should be room for a little more horsepower in there. You won't think it's funny if the pony starts eating your tires and things. Oh, you're thinking about a goat. Say, speaking of goats, I wonder if Judge Hooker would lend us his trailer to haul the pony home. <laughs> That'd be just the thing. Unc, it has a tailgate and everything. What's a tailgate? Well, it's the gate you let down to get things in and out of the trailer, my dear. Oh. All the girls know about is babies. No, Leroy. Uh, Unky, look out the window. Here comes Mr. Bullard up the walk. Mr. Bullard? What have you done now, Unc? Yeah, nothing I can think of. With a neighbor like Bullard, you never know. Yeah, I'm coming. Why doesn't he take his finger off the bell? He must be mad about something. Yeah, what a neighbor. He even makes the doorbell sound tough. <laughs> yeah, if he fools with me, I'll short circuit the wires. Hello, Mr. Bullard. Thought I heard somebody at the door. You did. Is there something I can do for you? There is. <laughs> uh, what? Gildersleeve, tell the mailman to stop leaving your mail at my house. Oh, if it's the postage on that letter he left last week, here's the two cents. I am not interested in the two cents, Gildersleeve. No, he's not. Here's a card that came this morning. You have, thank you. Don't mention it. Gildersleeve, speak to the postman. I'm tired of trotting across the street with your uninteresting mail. He's sorry. Say, this is from Railway Express. Railway Express? Give me my ponies here, my ponies here. Yeah, it looks like it, Leroy. Pony? Oh, boy. I'm going to get the garage ready. Hurry up, huh? Yeah, we're right with you, Leroy. Gildersleeve? Yes, Mr. Bullard. What's this about a pony? <laughs> well, Leroy's Aunt Hattie has sent him a pony. A horse across the street from me? <laughs> no, just a little pony. A Shetland. Gildersleeve, there's hardly room for you and me on this street to say nothing of adding a quadruped. <laughs> no, Bullard, let's not be difficult. Don't you tell me what to be, you nincompoop. Oop. Watch it, Bullard. And not so loud. The twins are asleep. Gildersleeve, step out on the porch and close the door. Why? I want to shout at you. <laughs> <laughs> now, Bullard, there's no reason for anybody to shout at anybody. The pony's coming and the pony's staying. It is not. It is so. Gildersleeve, this is a residential district, not the stockyards. But little Leroy... I'll is... not tolerate a horse. It's enough to live across the street from a... A, a water buffalo! <laughs> <laughs> He's a hard man to like. <laughs> Pull up closer to the garage, Judge. Very well. I just didn't want to tear down the pony's new home. <laughs> Hurry up, Buck. Let's get out. 
No, I'm hurrying, my boy. I'll let down the tailgate and you can lead the pony out. Yeah. Isn't he a beaut? I'm going to call him Butch. He's a splendid animal, Leroy. Three black feet and one white one. He wants to get out, Unc. Let down the tailgate. Yeah, all right, Leroy. Hang on to the bridle. Yeah, lead him down. Okay. Come on, Butch. Easy now. That's it, boy. There. Well done. Leroy, you're a natural born horseman. Yeah. Hi, Leroy. Hi, Jimmy. Oh, where'd you come from, little man? Oh, I was just walking home. Where'd you get the pony, Leroy? How tall would you say he is, Judge? How many hands? Well. Where'd you get the pony, Leroy? Where'd you get the pony? Leroy? Why don't you answer your little friend? Oh, he's just jealous like all the other kids. Can I pet him, Leroy? Oh. Leroy. <laughs> well, once. We gotta get some hay for him, Unc. Oh, yes, hay. We've got hay out at our place and oats. We'll get hay and oats, won't we, Unc? Sure, anything he'll eat. <laughs> oats and hay in the garage? <laughs> yeah, that's temporary, Judge. We'll build a little stable behind the garage. What are your neighbors going to think, Gilda? Yeah, I already know what one of them thinks. <laughs> well, I hate to be an alarmist, but if the neighbors object, they could make you move the pony out of the city. They could? Hey, that's not fair. I know kids will keep rabbits and ducks. They live in the city. Well, you can keep them out of my place, Leroy, at the edge of town. Oh, go away. Leroy. <laughs> well, no, oh, I think it'll be all right for Leroy to keep the pony. I can't imagine anybody being mean enough to object. Oh, I can. Whoa, boy. Yeah. Whoa. Jimmy, it's my horse. I'm the whoa sailor around here. <laughs> now, let's not be selfish, Leroy. Leroy, may I get acquainted with Butch? Well. Hello, boy. <laughs> Look, Gilda, he's nuzzling me. <laughs> yeah, he's a pretty sociable pony. <laughs> He likes the judge. Now, Butch, I'm ticklish. Be careful. <laughs> he likes me, Gilda. Well, there's no reason why a pony shouldn't get along with an old goat. Why, George, is the best thing that ever happened. Oop. There's Bullard glaring out of his big bay window. I wonder if he would cause trouble. Well, I'll go over and have a neighborly talk with him. Beat him to the punch. Yes, sir, the best defense is a good offense. And that's me, offensive. <laughs> yeah, sure, I'll beard the lion in his den. In a diplomatic sort of way. Yeah, I won't lean on the door by the way he does at my house. I'll just touch it lightly. Yes. Oops, Bullard. <laughs> I didn't expect you to open the door so soon. I was torn between opening it and locking it. <laughs> <laughs> May I come in? For a minute? If you're not busy. For a minute. Thank you. Did, uh, did you come over with good news, Gildersleeve? Good news? That you aren't really going to convert your garage into a barn? Convert the garage? Oh, no, indeed. Good. We're going to build a stable behind the garage. Oh, no. <laughs> Gildersleeve, I've a good mind. Uh, 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 Mr. Bullard, don't do something you'll be sorry for. How could I ever be sorry for running you and your menagerie out of the neighborhood? No, Mr. Bullard, it isn't my pony. It's little Leroy's. I don't care whose it is. Sit down a minute. I won't. Be. Mr. Bullard, you were a little boy once. I was not. I was big for my age. Well, as a big little boy, you must have had pets, rabbits, chickens, horses. I had a string of polo ponies at the age of ten. <laughs> but I didn't keep them in my garage. You know, Mr. Bullard, mm -hmm. I've always wanted to ask you about that picture of a horse there over your mantle. That? That's Maud. Fine figure of a horse. Splendid old girl, Gildersleeve. My favorite pony. She had beauty, brains, poise. Oh, you can see that. 
and a fighting heart, just like me. I'll never forget the night Maud lay in her stall with horse fever. You know, sit down, old man, and tell me all about it. Thank you. <laughs> yes, I was, I was just a lad, and Maud meant all the world to me. Yeah, that's the way Leroy feels about Butch. Yeah, well, go ahead. I'm interrupting. Well, about 11 o'clock that night, I heard Maud pawing in her stall. Maud and I were so close, I knew immediately that something was wrong. Uh... I dressed quickly, and when I got to the stable, she was down. Too bad. She was hot with fever, Gildersleeve, but she was shivering. I covered her with blankets. All night in the hay, I lay there with her head cradled in my lap. Did she pull through? Well, there was that dark moment just before the dawn. Then, as the morning sun filtered through the haymow, Maud raised her grateful big brown eyes as if to say, Thank you, Robinson. <laughs> she made it. Yes, she made it. <laughs> Here, take my handkerchief. Thank you. Mr. Bullard? What would you have done if somebody had tried to separate you and Maud? Why, they wouldn't have dared. Anyone who'd separate a boy and his favorite horse would be a heartless blackguard. Let's remember that, shall we? <laughs> Goodbye, Bullard. <laughs> Goodbye, Maud. I mean, kill the sleep. Well, I have good news for him, Bertie. Yes, sir? Yeah, I just talked to Mr. Bullard, and Leroy won't have any trouble keeping Butch. That's good. Leroy sure is tickled with that pony. They're outside having lunch now. Yeah, they are? Leroy made himself a cheese sandwich and took Butch a lump of sugar and a handful of shredded wheat. <laughs> yeah, fine. I'll go out and see how they're doing. Leroy? <laughs> Leroy, what's the matter? Oh, my goodness, Leroy, what happened? Butch is gone. When I came out with her lunch, he was gone. <laughs> well, don't disturb the neighborhood. Let's get busy and find him before he tramples somebody's flowers. You go down the alley and I'll go up the street. Okay. Hey, boy. Hey, boy. <laughs> yeah, that pony can't be far away. Let's see. Which way would he go? Say... Here comes Bullard, leading him across the street. He's caught Leroy's pony. Now, isn't that thoughtful of him? What a fine neighbor. Gildersleeve! Oh. Well, Bullard, awfully nice of you to bring the pony over. I am not being nice. The minute you left, he was over in my yard. This animal has to go. But, Mr. Bullard, why? He just ate the bullseye out of my archery target. <laughs> well, they like straw, you know. <laughs> And he's grateful. Look, he's nuzzling you. Yeah, well, just oh, go, go away, go away. Isn't that cute? I don't see anything cute about it. He's rubbing his ear against your arm and looking at you with those big brown eyes. Maud had brown eyes. <laughs> brown eyes are so trusting. What do you say, Mr. Bullard? Can he stay? Well, I'll give him one more chance in memory of Maud. Great. But believe me, Gildersleeve, this is the last chance. Oh. Butch, come back. He was shouting at me. <laughs> the great Gildersleeve returns in a moment. You know, salads are mighty good for everyone, and if you have trouble getting the folks at your house to eat them, just try this. Make an especially tempting salad. Maybe one with chilled grapefruit and orange sections, arranged pinwheel style on beds of crispy lettuce, and topped with a few pecan halves. And then, to be sure this salad will taste as delicious as it looks, top it with a generous spoonful of the most popular salad dressing ever created. I mean, Miracle Whip. I don't see how anyone could resist a combination like that. Sunny citrus fruit topped with such good salad dressing. 
And Miracle Whip sure does taste good. Millions of folks say Miracle Whip tastes just exactly right. Miracle Whip tastes different, too, because it actually is a different kind of salad dressing. It's made from a secret craft recipe that combines the very best qualities of old-fashioned boiled dressing and fine mayonnaise. And it's blended a special craft way so it's smooth as smooth can be. No wonder Miracle Whip is America's favorite salad dressing. Yes, really, America's favorite, because Miracle Whip outsells the next 20 leading brands of salad dressing combined. Try it, won't you? Get a jar tomorrow and see if your folks don't like their salads more than ever before when you make them with the salad dressing millions prefer, Miracle Whip. Well, let's get back to the great Gildersleeve. Since Aunt Patty sent Leroy a pony, the water commissioner has had a little trouble persuading Mr. Bullard, who lives across the street, that the pony won't become a problem in the neighborhood. And he's pretty proud of the job he's done. Right, George Gildersleeve. You continue to amaze me. What a diplomat. Why they don't have you in Washington, I'll never know. <laughs> you know, just to keep friend Bullard in a good mood about the pony, I think I'll stop in Peavy's and buy him a couple of cigars. Hello, Peavy. Oh, hello, Mr. Gildersleeve. <laughs> what can I do for you today? Well, I came in to get a couple of cigars for Mr. Bullard. <laughs> Mr. Bullard, have you running errands for him now? Uh, no, Peavy. I just want to treat him to a cigar. He's doing me a favor. You don't say. <laughs> now, don't raise your eyebrows, Peavy. I've discovered he's a man with a heart. My, my, that's the greatest discovery since penicillin. <laughs> <laughs> now, Peavy, Bullard's all right. I guess you heard about Leroy's pony. Yes, the judge told me about it. Well, at first, Bullard objected to our keeping it in the neighborhood. And I found out how to handle him. It took me to find his soft spot. Mr. Bullard has a soft spot? Yep, right over his mantle. How's that? <laughs> well, that's where he keeps his favorite horse. He has a horse over his mantle? He's just a picture, Petey. But Bullard is pretty sentimental about it. It was his favorite polo pony. Her name was Maud. I used to have a Maud over the mantle. She was Mrs. Peavy's aunt. Really? She couldn't play polo, but her name was Maud. Peavy. <laughs> yeah. I'm glad Mr. Bullard isn't giving you any trouble about the pony. Oh, not a bit now, Peavy. I have him eating out of my hand. Uh, hand me the cigar. Okay, well. Well, here comes Chief of Police Gates. Well, hello, fellas. Hello, Chief. Glad to see you. I'm not so sure you are, Commissioner. Yes, this? Are you keeping a horse at your house? A horse? Well, not exactly, Chief. Why? It's a pony. Yeah, a little pony. Mr. Bullard has filed a detailed complaint against the animal. Mr. Bullard? Hmm. The fellow who is doing the favor for you. <laughs> He's, uh... Asking for seizure and removal of the poor creature from the neighborhood. Sorry, Commissioner. Yeah, but, Chief... He said the animal ate the bullseye out of his archery target. Yeah, I know that. But scarcely an hour ago, he promised to give us another chance. You've had it. I... You what? Seems the pony slipped his halter, went back over to Bullard's, and rolled in his pansy bed. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> Chief... Can't you do something? My hands are tied, Commissioner. There's an old ordinance on the books, and you're a city official. You don't want to break the law. Well, no. I'm to meet Bullard at your house in 15 minutes to do the dirty deed. Sorry, Commissioner. Yeah, so am I. So am I. <laughs> That's the way it is, Leroy. I wanted to tell you before they get here. Gosh, Unc, do I have to give him up? Well, Leroy, he did roll in the pansy bed. We can't let him be a nuisance. We can't? No, of course not. You understand, don't you, my boy? No. <laughs> well, in a way, Mr. Buller's right. The pony won't be too happy. We don't have enough room here in the backyard. Now, look, you don't have too long. 
Why don't you go and talk it over with Butch? Okay, Uncle. Yeah, I'll go intercept the chief. See what they plan to do. Okay. They aren't going to do anything. They aren't going to find you. Come on, Butch. In the house, through the back door. Step up, boy. Quiet, boy. Quiet. Tiptoe. Come on, now. That's it. Don't slip, now. Leroy. Uh-oh. Yeah, Bertie? What are you doing with that horse in the house? <laughs> I'm taking him upstairs to my room. Leroy, you get that horse out of here. But I gotta hide him someplace, Bertie. They're coming after him. Who is? Mr. Bullard and Chief Gates. The police? What that pony done? Nothing much. But if I don't hide him, they'll take him. Leroy, you can't take that pony upstairs. But gosh, Bertie, what'll I do? Of course, I have heard of ponies in the basement. You have? Especially basements like ours. Keen, Bertie. Don't tell anybody you saw us. Leroy, if I told anybody I saw a horse in the house, they'd think I was crazy. Yeah, I guess they would. And Bertie ain't crazy, so she ain't gonna tell nobody she saw a horse in the house. (laughs) Thanks, Bertie. I don't know where the pony is, Chief. The last time I saw him, he was in the backyard. Here they come, Leroy. They're coming through the kitchen. Yeah, we gotta get out of here. Come on, boy. Out the front door. Hey, that sounded like a horse. Chief, who ever heard of a horse in a house? Well, oh, hello, Bertie. Afternoon, Chief. Bertie, what was that noise? Did you hear something? It sounded like a horse. Could have been me. <laughs> Bertie, yeah, I'm afraid this sounded like something on four legs. Well, I walks also heavy on two. <laughs> now, Bertie. Hey. That's coming from out in front. Well, Chief, do your duty. Right. Hurry up. Uh, they're getting away. Out the front door. Come on. Ah, there they go. Isn't that pretty? Leroy! Leroy, come back and surrender. I I used to ride like that when I had Maud. Well, I think I can catch him if you'll let me through the door. Will you stop pushing, well, Chief. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Stop pushing. But stop. I can't catch him if you don't let me through. Well, yep. They're out of sight now. Chief, why didn't you do something instead of just standing there? I tried. You wouldn't let me. Who? <laughs> me? <laughs> Nice of you to come with me, Bullard. I'm not being nice. I simply want to make sure that, well, that uh, Leroy didn't run that pony too far. Well, there he is with the pony. I had a hunch we'd find him out here at little Jimmy's house. Hmm. Good pasture. Not blue grass, but it's pasture. <laughs> Oh, Leroy. Hi, Al. Hello, Mr. Bullard. Leroy. Uh, hello, Bud. Are we arrested? Oh, no, no, no. The uh, chief changed his mind. He knows nothing about horses. How'd you know I was out here, Unc? Well, Jimmy offered to keep your pony this morning. And I know you, Leroy. I know you wouldn't break a city ordinance by keeping your pony in town. Which is going to stay here with Jimmy? I'll be glad to keep him. Boy, will I. You be good to him now, Jimmy. I will. Oh, I'm sure you can depend on Jimmy Leroy. He has a nice big pasture out here. Now, we made a deal. He gets to ride him to school, and I get to come out and ride him weekends and all summer. And I get to feed him. Sounds like quite a deal. Well, it's legal. (laughs) Well, I think we'd better start for home, Leroy. It'll soon be time for dinner. Okay. It's dinner time for Butch, too, Jimmy. Leroy, I know how to take care of him. I'm going to give him some oats tonight. Well, if you run out of oats, he likes shredded wheat. And uh, don't let him roll in the pansy beds. Well, I'm going to put him in the pasture. He can run with the other horses. Oh, he'll like that. There'll be company for him. Yeah. 
Well, goodbye, Jimmy. Goodbye. Goodbye, Leroy. Bye. Come along, Leroy. Okay. Uh, Bullard? Oh, thank you. Thank you. Uh, Goodbye, Butch. The, uh, the pony will have a nice home there, Leroy. Uh, horses don't like being in town. They like freedom. The, um, the hard pavement hurts their hooves. You understand, don't you, Leroy? Sure. <laughs> Poor little Leroy, lost in his thoughts. He's had a busy day. Unc. Yes, Leroy? Do you suppose you'll forget who I am by next Saturday? No, he won't forget you, my boy. Are you sure, Unc? Sure. Look out of the car window, Leroy. Say, he's following us. He's running along the fence. Yes, he's saying goodbye to you, Leroy. Yes. Gildersleeve will be right back. Do you like shrimp salad? I'll bet you do. And for the best shrimp salad you ever tasted, remember to do this. Make it with Miracle Whip salad dressing. Miracle Whip will give that salad such a wonderful flavor, a lively, teasing flavor that's not too sharp and yet not too mild, a flavor that millions of folks agree tastes just right. Yes, Miracle Whip tastes so good it's become the most popular salad dressing ever created. Try it, won't you? See for yourself how good your salads can taste when you make them with America's favorite salad dressing, the one and only Miracle Whip. Hey, this is Gildersleeve again, folks. We had planned tonight to give you the names of the winners of those beautiful new Ford Victorias for the fifth and final week of Parquet's Name the Twins contest. But to tell the truth, you folks sent in so many fine names, the judges were just snowed under. And believe me, that takes a lot of snow. So, bear with us, folks. We'll have the winners for the fifth week next Wednesday night. You know, we didn't hear much from the little twins tonight. But they're doing fine. They're growing. Just as cute as can be. Hope we get some real nice names for them. And thanks a lot. Good night, everybody. <laughs> Gilda Steve is played by Willard Waterman. The show is written by Paul West, John Elliott, and Andy White, with music by Robert Armbruster. Included in the cast are Walter Tetley, Mary Lee Robb, Lily Randolph, Gail Gordon, Ken Christie, Jeffrey Silver, Earl Ross, and Dick McGrath. This is John Heaston saying good night for the Kraft Foods Company, makers of the famous line of Kraft quality food products. Be sure to listen in next Wednesday and every Wednesday for the further adventures of the Great Gilda Sleeve. What's the difference between a sandwich that's really super and one that's merely good? Well, here's the answer. Kraft's prepared mustard. For when you add a little mustard to cold meats or cheese, you add a lot of tang. Hidden flavors pop right out. Every bite tastes better. There are two kinds of Kraft mustard, you know. Kraft salad mustard, mild and delicately spiced, and Kraft mustard with snappy horseradish added. Have both on hand for different tastes, different uses. With either kind, when you add a little mustard, you add a lot of tang. Get Kraft's prepared mustard. Hear the Falcon each Sunday over this station. Check your newspaper for time of broadcast and listen next Sunday as the Falcon solves the case of the big talker. Play You Bet Your Life with Groucho Marx on NBC.